This is KGW News at Noon. As we speak, Portland is swearing in its new police chief. Jamie Resch is taking the oath of office during a private ceremony right now. Her predecessor, Danielle Outlaw, accepted the police commissioner's job in Philadelphia. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. Mayor Ted Wheeler chose Resch, who is a veteran of the Bureau. She started 20 years ago as a patrol officer and worked her way up the chain of promotions, most recently serving as assistant chief. In a statement, she says she's grateful for the opportunity. She says she plans to support the great work being done by the sworn and professional staff to continue to build trust within the community and to recruit and hire the best candidates to join the PPB team. We spoke with several civic groups that are mostly happy with this appointment. She's one of our, you know, she's, she's Portlander, she's Oregonian. I mean, she, she knows uh, the, the culture in and out uh, and the system and the communities. Resch got right down to business even before getting sworn in. Yesterday, she appointed a new deputy chief as well as a new assistant chief of operations. Well, the other big event happening today, of course, is New Year's Eve. <laughs> Keely, anybody going out tonight should expect plenty of rain. Yeah, not only is it going to be rainy, it's also going to be breezy out there tonight. We're already getting the organized system starting to make its way into the coast right now. And you can see from our Cannon Beach sky cam, certainly some wet sand out there looking a little gray. Raining out there, we're at 49 degrees in Cannon Beach. Here in the metro area, we are in between showers. We're at 50 degrees right now. The winds are light, but again, they're going to be picking up as we head into the evening hours. 42 right now at the Dalles with some clouds out there. And here is a quick look at your New Year's. Year's Eve forecast. So yes, it's going to be a rainy evening and it's going to be a breezy evening. The winds out of the south anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. But hey, temperatures not too bad. We're going to be right around 49 degrees if you're heading out at 8 o'clock and at midnight 50 degrees. And if you're still out at 2 o'clock in the morning, which some folks probably will, still going to be a nice, pleasant 50 degrees. Now the rain, that's the story tonight. The story this weekend is going to be the snow, not only in the ca uh, Cascades, but also in the coast range. I'll talk more about that coming up in about 15 minutes. Thank you, Keely. Other news now, a person is badly injured after a fire broke out inside that trailer overnight. This happened just east of 205 off Stark just after 1 a.m. Crews were able to get the flames under control and rush the person inside to the burn center at Emanuel Medical Center. Right now, we don't know how the fire started. Well, the clock is ticking for some parents up in Seattle. Hundreds of students could be banned from the classroom next week if they don't have their shots up to date. Washington lawmakers removed personal and philosophical exemptions for certain vaccinations after the recent measles outbreak. Right now, kids are home for winter break and about 2,000 of them are not up to date on their shots. They have until January 8th to get that taken care of. Vaccinations is very important. You know, uh, for all the kids anywhere, uh, you know, especially in school. If a student arrives and they are not up to date, they will, of course, have to be kept out of class. To exempt their kids from the MMR vaccine, parents in Washington can still cite medical or religious reasons. A teenage climber who took a dangerous fall on Mount Hood yesterday is now off the mountain and recovering. The 16-year-old hurt his leg after falling about 500 feet near the summit. Rescuers got him down to Timberline Lodge just after it got dark. He was then taken to the hospital. Crews aren't saying how badly he's hurt, but he is expected to recover. And get ready to welcome crab back to the menu. The commercial crabbing season starts today on the Oregon coast. It's a bit of a late start, though, but tests showed those crabs weren't big enough a month ago. Last year's season, boy, was it a good one. Really, it was one of the best on record with more than 18 million pounds of crab brought in. A Northwest Portland restaurant has served its last meals after 20 years in business. Byways on Northwest Gleason was a really popular breakfast and lunch spot. The owners couldn't work out a new lease. Megan Brinkley and Colin McFadden Irving say closing is bittersweet. We're trying to make it fun. We're seeing like so many faces, like just from the, in 20 years, you got a whole bunch of family, you know, which is really great. And uh, we're just trying to make it fun. That's the big part about it. It's I mean, there's some feelings, 
but we're, we're holding on. Well, the owners don't have plans to open another restaurant, but say they do plan to put together a cookbook to keep their favorite dishes alive. Hey, another big closure. Moonstruck Chocolate has closed its doors on Northwest 23rd. A natural gas explosion leveled the place back in 2016. It took two years to reopen and Moonstruck says it never really bounced back. Now it'll focus on its other locations, including the flagship store downtown and remodeling its headquarters in St. John's. Some bad news for anybody celebrating New Year's at Timberline Lodge. The annual fireworks display has been postponed due to windy weather. It'll now be held on Saturday, January 4th at 8 p.m. Timberline is one of three ski resorts throwing a big New Year's Eve bash. The fireworks show at both Meadows and Ski Bowl are still scheduled to go on as planned. And this is news you can use if you're going out tonight. If you need a ride on New Year's Eve, TriMet has you covered. Buses and trains are free starting at 8 p.m. and the trains will run as late as 3 o'clock in the morning. Today is also your last chance to use TriMet's old ticket system. Starting tomorrow, you will need a new Hot Pass card to ride TriMet. Hey, Ducks fans, the countdown is on. The Rose Bowl, of course, is tomorrow with Oregon taking on the Wisconsin Badgers in Pasadena. We sent down Orlando Sanchez and photojournalist Chad Dehart, and they really did hit the trifecta, catching up with the players, the band, and Oregon Duck alum, Neil Everett. Day one of our California adventure begins at the Rose Bowl. Media day for the Oregon Ducks as they prepare for a date with the Wisconsin Badgers on New Year's Day. In the granddaddy of them all, one of the most iconic games in college football. The tradition of the Rose Bowl runs deep. It's a, it's a huge deal. It's about as big as it gets. This is what I've worked for my entire life, man. It's, this, is, this is it. It's you know opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, I'm excited. It's just super crazy to see my jersey with the patch on it and just know that this is actually really going to happen. Like, there's no words that can describe how I'm feeling right now. Like, this is a dream come true. You know, this is granddaddy of them all, and this is, you know, what you dream and pray about as a kid. And uh, I'm just going to take it all in. From Pasadena to L.A., the Ducks are everywhere. The Oregon Band crashes Sports Center. Show. We're working here. <laughs> but not before we chopped it up with ESPN's Neil Everett. We're getting a chance to cover the Rolls Bowl, and I'm curious what it's like to be a participant in it, to take in all of the pageantry that goes into the Rose Bowl. Well, listen, it's the granddaddy of them all. And what's interesting enough is my granddaddy played for the Ducks on the 1920 Rose Bowl team. They lost to Harvard 7-6. They missed four field goals. Oh, come on, man. Uh, so for a 100 years later, to be able to, to have Oregon in the game, to be able to go to the game, and I thank ESPN for giving me the night off to go to the game. And, and, you know, and, and listen, it's, it's going to be a great game, Wisconsin-Oregon. I mean, they really match up well. The Wisconsin people have been great. They're staying right down here in our L.A. Live area. So, uh, listen, I'm fired up. Neil, what's this year been like to see what the Ducks have been able to do yeah. year two under Mario Cristobal and to see them take that next huge step for the program? Well, you know, that guy, he's something else, man. You know, I mean, he just, he's all business. He texted me on New Year's Eve, so it was darn near a year ago, about how you know how they were going back to work, and it was all in capital letters. And I'm like, like, what's you know, he, why is he texting me? I, I mean, I felt honored he was, but I'm like, also like, dude. And I mean, it, listen, it, it, he puts them to work, and 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 the proof is proof is in Pasadena. What's been the Oregon fan base like as we lead up to the Rose Bowl? Are you starting to see more green and yellow? Well, you know what, like, like we mentioned, uh, we're right in the middle of, we're right in the middle of Wisconsin right here. Which you are brave. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Oh my God, look at all these people in red. What is going on? Oh no, I am wearing the wrong colors, but go Ducks. I can't wait to watch the game tomorrow.